Hello everyone, welcome to U.S. Immigration Updates, an officially verified YouTube channel. U.S. immigration reform has been a constant topic of discussion and has been unresolved for decades. The growing backlogs have caused tremendous pressure on immigrants who have been waiting for years to sort out their immigration process. With the continued efforts of the Biden administration, we are getting great news on Biden's legal immigration program, which would welcome more than half a million new immigrants. In this video, we will discuss this program in detail. If you are interested in learning more about this topic, stay tuned until the end of this video. If you like this video, please click the subscribe button, the like this video button. And don't forget to press the bell icon to get new updates instantly and directly to your YouTube. Now let's get into the video and find out what the latest updates are on U.S. immigration. According to unpublished government data obtained by news agencies, the Biden administration has welcomed more than 500,000 migrants under programs intended to stop illegal border crossings or provide refuge to refugees, using a 1950s law to start the largest expansion of legal immigration in modern U.S. history. According to internal government statistics, court records, and public reports, the administration has permitted at least 541,000 migrants to enter the United States through the Immigration Parole Authority which gives federal officials the authority to authorize the entry of foreigners who lack visas. By providing prospective immigrants with a safe and legal alternative to traveling to the United States with the aid of smugglers and entering the country illegally, officials have been able to deflect migration away from the southern border through the unprecedented use of the parole authority. It has also given the agency a quicker option to resettle refugees as it works to reconstruct a resettlement system that was completely destroyed by the draconian cuts made during the Trump administration. The authorities have used the parole authority to welcome about 168,400 migrants from Latin America and the Caribbean who have American sponsors, 141,200 Ukrainian refugees, 133,000 asylum seekers who are waiting for an appointment in Mexico, 77,000 Afghan evacuees, and 22,000 Ukrainians who are being processed at the southern border of the United States. The Biden administration's immigration parole programs represent the largest increase in legal immigration in the last three decades when taken as a whole. To the surprise of Republican detractors, the administration did so unilaterally and without the legislature's explicit approval. This is despite the fact that Congress hasn't raised the cap on legal immigration since 1990 due to decades of partisan stagnation. Immigrants typically need a visa or refugee status to be able to live and work legally in the United States. However, a regulation from 1952 permits officials to admit people without visas if doing so advances a urgent humanitarian cause or significant public benefit. Parole allows immigrants to lawfully live and work in the United States, often for one or two year periods that can be renewed, without granting them permanent status or citizenship. There is precedent for utilizing parole to resettle refugees, according to Doris Meissner, a senior immigration officer in the United States under the Reagan and Clinton administrations. Republicans and Democrats in power during the Cold War released tens of thousands of people who were fleeing communism in Southeast Asia, Eastern Europe, and Cuba. Meissner asserted that the use of parole by the Biden administration was unprecedented. According to Meissner, who oversaw the now-defunct Immigration and Naturalization Service from 1993 to 2000, at this scale and in this time period, it is unprecedented. The extensive use of parole has turned into a necessity, according to Leon Rodrigues, former director of U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services under President Barack Obama's second term, because the Biden administration has realized it cannot control migrant flows just through deterrence. It's fair to say that the pressures are much greater now, which is why the numerical scope of these parole programs is probably the largest we've seen, certainly in a long time, Rodriguez said. The first significant application of parole by the Biden administration took place in the summer of 2021 when it was used to relocate tens of thousands of Afghans following a significant airlift from Taliban-controlled Afghanistan. The administration then used the parole authority to process thousands of Ukrainians who had traveled to the border between the United States and Mexico during the early stages of Russia's invasion of Ukraine in early 2022. Officials established the Uniting for Ukraine initiative, which enables Ukrainians who have American sponsors to fly directly to the United States to receive parole, in an effort to deter more Ukrainian immigration along the southern border. The administration established a second sponsorship-based parole program in October 2022 for Venezuelan migrants who were flooding the U.S.-Mexico border in unprecedented numbers. This program was based on the Ukrainian model. This initiative was increased in January to cover migrants from Cuba, Haiti, and Nicaragua to prevent inhabitants of those crisis-ridden nations from crossing the border illegitimately. 
the United States began enabling migrants in Mexico to use the CBP-1 mobile app to request a chance to enter the nation at a legitimate port of entry in the same month. Government representatives and attorneys confirmed that those admitted to the country under the process are often paroled for one to two years and given an immigration court hearing where they might ask for asylum. Using parole on a smaller scale, the Biden administration has also welcomed deported American military veterans, migrant families that were split up by the Trump administration, at-risk Central American youngsters with American family members, and Cuban and Haitian relatives. It's anticipated that more migrants will be paroled into the United States. The sponsorship program for Cubans, Haitians, Nicaraguans, and Venezuelans has a yearly cap of 360,000 arrivals, whereas the program supported by the CBP-1 app now permits up to 529,250 migrants to be processed annually. There is no numerical limit to the Uniting for Ukraine policy. The Biden administration is additionally putting into action a different program that will permit immigrants from Colombia, El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras to enter the country on parole if the government has granted visa requests submitted by their American citizens or legal residents. According to the Biden administration, the use of parole has allowed the U.S. to reunite families, resettle at-risk immigrants, and ease border strain. For instance, authorities have attributed tightened asylum procedures, the CBP-1 app, and a program for Cubans, Haitians, Nicaraguans, and Venezuelans, together with CBP, for a sharp decline in unauthorized crossings along the southern border in recent weeks. Republican state and federal lawmakers, meanwhile, have sharply criticized the Biden administration for using parole so frequently and for allegedly exploiting the congressionally imposed restrictions on immigration and worker visas. Republican-led states referred to the policy for Cubans, Haitians, Nicaraguans, and Venezuelans with U.S. sponsors as a illegal program that places a financial burden on American communities due to the expenditures of social and medical services in an ongoing lawsuit contesting the effort. The states claimed that the Department of Homeland Security has effectively created a new visa program, without the formalities of legislation from Congress on the false pretense of deterring individuals from crossing the border illegally between the ports of entry. Senior DHS officials stated that the administration's use of parole is legal since immigration officers still decide on an individual basis whether migrants should receive parole, and some applications are turned away. All parolees are being screened for security, according to officials. Case-by-case adjudications are taking place. In order to discuss these issues, an official spoke on the condition of anonymity but said, We very strongly believe that this is well within our legislative responsibilities and is a use of parole that's been consistent with how parole has been utilized in the past. Over the past several decades, both Democratic and Republican administrations have established parole programs, though they were much smaller in scope than the procedures set up under President George W. Bush for military families and Cuban doctors. While the Trump administration intended to drastically reduce the use of parole, several programs were still in existence. The DHS officials emphasized that the government feels its parole procedures shouldn't be compared because they were developed under different conditions. The officials also pointed out that over the same time period, when more than 500,000 persons received parole, the United States deported or expelled more than 3 million immigrants, primarily under the now-expired Title 42 epidemic border policy. The combination of very separate parole systems that serve very different purposes is deceptive and incorrect, according to DHS spokesman Nari Kitudit. More people have been removed or expelled than paroled in the last two years, she added. According to DHS officials, the programs for Afghans and Ukrainians were developed in reaction to international emergencies. They stated that the parole procedure for people from Cuba, Haiti, Nicaragua, and Venezuela was established to deter unauthorized immigration and as part of an agreement whereby Mexico promised to accept people from these nations who reached the U.S. unlawfully. Contrary to such programs, migrants processed through CBP-1 are both paroled and put into deportation proceedings, according to the officials. Although DHS officials describe the programs as being very different from other forms of parole, one of them conceded that, in reality, the same underlying authority is allowing these people to enter. Although proponents of immigration have largely praised the administration's use of parole, some have expressed worry that hundreds of thousands of migrants could find themselves in a situation where they lack a clear path to permanent legal status. The parole agreements might possibly be revoked by a Republican administration. For hundreds of thousands of individuals, the future is uncertain. Meissner, a former top immigration official who is currently a senior fellow at the Migration Policy Institute, a nonpartisan research tank, said that it is also safety and protection for the time being. Congress passed a number of measures to grant parolees permanent residency during the Cold War. But even for groups like Afghan evacuees, who have received bipartisan support, 
the chances of the current bitterly divided Congress doing so once more are minimal. Senior DHS officials stated that they anticipate migrants to leave the country after their parole is over if they haven't obtained permanent status by utilizing applications for asylum or visas for American relatives. One official said, Our expectation is that we will be seeking to remove those individuals if, after two years, they haven't found a legal pathway in the U.S. That's all we have for you in this bulletin. I hope you found this video useful. We will post new videos when there are more updates. The U.S. Immigration Update channel provides all necessary visa information and procedures for your U.S. immigration journey. It is important to understand the United States immigration processing steps, visa application requirements, processing times, forms, fees, and more. We will continue to provide all information about U.S. visitor visas such as B-1 and B-2, work visas such as L-1A, L-1B, and H-1B, student visas, green cards, immigrant visas, EB-1, EB-2, EB-3, EB-4, and EB-5, and family immigrant visas. Thank you for visiting us today, and we'll see you in the next video. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please subscribe channel for more U.S. immigration update videos.